Hey folks, we're down here at the 2016 ICAST show here in Orlando. We're at the FLW booth right now. I got the cup behind me. I might steal that. I'm not sure. But right now we are going to take a little tour around the showroom floor and let you guys see what all goes down here at ICAST. So let's go. Uh, stopped over here at the Shimano booth. Found my old buddy, Alex Davis. Alex, uh, are you tired of standing up yet? Because there's a lot of that goes on here at ICAST. Not yet. I'm like two hours in, so. But I'm, I'm getting kind of there. Ask me tomorrow at this time, and I'll be like, yeah, I want to go home. <laughs> I hate this floor. Well, I tell you what, man. There's all kinds of stuff. We got rods. We got reels. We got Loomis, Jackal. I want to see what's cool and new. So show me a reel. Let's go that way to the good stuff. Let's go to the good stuff. We're going to the juice. We're going to the meat. <laughs> but I also, oh my God, I want it. <laughs> Dude, flipping stick. We have a new flipping stick. Yeah, okay, so this one, tell us about this flipping stick and what situation you would use it in. I'm going to use this in um, light vegetation. It doesn't really have the taper for the thick sure. stuff um, or the backbone, so I think that lighter vegetation. Mm -hmm. Like small lily pads, dollar pads, this is where it's really going to oh, come yeah, in. I mean, dollar pads, that'd be perfect. So you just you put it like this, and then you reel, and you jerk like real hard. So that'd be perfect. <laughs> Can't wait. I like it, man. Exciting stuff coming here. Yeah, don't knock, don't knock that over, yeah, man. I'm kind of – it looks heavy. Oh, how busy is it going to be? All right. We have the new metanium. What is this bad boy? It's the new metanium. It's pretty much the uh, baddest reel on the market. It's shiny. Shiny and smooth. There's no smoother reel. You just throw it out there, smooth all the way back. Hair jig. That's what I got to mess with it. Hair jig. Probably the best reel I've ever put in my hand. Well, so I was going to say, uh, you know, some reels, especially nowadays, they're getting so specific to like techniques almost. You mentioned a hair jig, but what else would you do with this reel? Is it a good all around reel? It's going to come in three ratios. So you're going to have XG, which is eight, HG, which is seven, and then your regular is going to be six. So you'll be able to do everything that you want to with it. Everything. Everything? So I could go, I mean, I flipped with the Metanium before the last year, the last year's model of the Metanium, and that thing was pretty dope. What's better about this one? It's going to be smoother, just all around smoother. Put it in your hand just for one second. Let me take oh, this. Let me, let, me, let me take this microphone here. So what's a guy got to do to walk away with one of these things? Don't walk away with it now because I'll send that big guy after you. Oh, there's a big guy. There's always a big guy. Always. Give me my microphone back. I'll give you your reel. But new Metanium, probably the best reel I've ever put in my hand. I can't wait to fish with them next year. It's going to be great. Get you some. So Get you some of that. Any other reels we should look at? Got one spinning reel. A spinning reel? Since the last three years, I've made almost every check with a spinning reel. I've actually kind of like them. We should probably look at one then. Where do we got to go? This way? This way. There's the big guy that's going to chase you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to Get him. That. Yep, he's going to get that. you. <laughs> New Stratic CI4. Ooh. It's just replacing the old CI4. They've done some small adjustments with it. It's going to have an easier bail. It's a lot smoother. It actually gets to cast, from what I got to see, about 10 yards farther than the old Stratic CI4. So you just made something that was great, greater. It's almost got a Stella look to it. It has a, it has a new, like a sleeker look. Yeah. It's going to look a little bit better instead of having all black like the other one. There you got a little more shiny. It's got the Higani frame. It's pretty much the baddest spin reel on the market. What's your favorite spinning technique to do? Drop shot. <laughs> Duh. Is there any other technique? Wacky Rig Cinco. Oh, yeah. Classics. And if you're going to use those, what size of this bad boy would you use? I like the 2500. They're going to have it in a 1000, I believe, and then the 3000. I like 2500. You can do just about anything. It's, it holds enough line where I can do anything with it, and it also feels really good in my hand. It has a smaller handle. Just perfect for me. I dig it. So we stopped over here at the Rappel booth, found my guy Jacob Wheeler. Uh, you guys got all kinds of cool stuff hanging around here, but right now it's like a thousand degrees outside because we're in Orlando. What uh, what's cool and new and like summery from Rapala? All right, you know when you think of summer, you think of one thing for me anyway. The grass is starting to come up, the fish are starting to scatter out. You know the fish on the ledges are starting to go back shallow. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're getting this my time of year, you know, when you go out there and you get to throw a top water all day. But one thing we got new is the new popping frog. Ooh, let's see, popping let's frog. see it. Okay, so what we got here is two mean catching fish machines. All right. Now this one right here is 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 more of that red tone. That's one of my favorite colors when I'm throwing like a red or like a more of a black or red darker colors, especially low light conditions. You know, I'm all about throwing something a little bit more dark in those low light. You know, I, one thing about frog fishing is them suckers can be finicky. And bass are like, do they look up there and they're looking at that color? And I never thought back in the day, growing up, I had a black and I had a white one. Mm -hmm. And I started messing around with different colors and when they blow up on it and miss it, and it makes a difference. So what we got, we have the new clear, clear frog. Now when you think clear, like what the heck? When they start missing old brownie over here, so that one in. you bring the clear one out. Yeah. The water gets clear, you gotta switch it up. And look at his eyes. Woo. That's like right there. He's a mean. Hey, if, if something looked like, hey, if, if, if somebody looked at you like that, uh, like that frog is right now, wouldn't you wanna eat him? Dude, he's mean mugging me he's right mean now. Mean mugging you, you have to smack him upside his head. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the thing. I mean, these Terminator frogs are awesome. Just a couple of different things. You know, when we get technical, you know, they have a hole in the back to where it release the water. That's really important when you're oh, frog yeah. fishing. I mean, I hate it. Hate it when you pick up a frog, squeezing that water out. You're like, and that messes your hookup ratio. So that's really important that we have. We have a big three aught uh, VMC hook in this thing, and it has a big bite. That's a really important thing, no matter what you got going on. A three aught hook. You know, when you're setting the hook, when there's that, you know, those pads or up underneath the dock. You better have something that's going to get them out of there, and that hooks us the job. And the waiting system, you can cast that thing a mile, too. Oh, dude, it's, it gets after it. Like, it's like, you throw some suffix braid out there, you're like, there it is. And then you got to hope and pray when you hook one up at that distance. Well, that's a good thing is you get like a 7-4 Kuma heavy action rod, and you crack him, and you just keep on reeling. Hey, that's the thing is you just you wind on him. That works, man. You got to wind on him. You got to wind him in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so outside the frog, what else we got? Okay, so for finesse, you know, tactics, that's been a big, big deal back in the day. You know, we've seen like Ayler and Cody keep it secret for a while. It's throwing a Nico rig or throwing a nail weight. You know, that's a big deal. And VMC came out with a, a, a hook that's specifically designed for that. You know, I, I've, I've had problems in the past where I'd hook up on them and trying to figure out what do I throw up. You know, do I throw like a, a drop shot style hook? Do I throw this? Do I throw that? Trying to figure that out. And, and they came out with a great product right here. And it's basically just a straight shank, but it has an off center hook point. It allows you, when you hook that fish, he's not coming off. You know, it's like 99.9% .9 hookup ratio on this thing. You see that little dude right there? And that's a smaller one. And it's good for drop shotting as well. You know, size two right here. I use them for drop shotting, just nose hook and stuff and whatnot. But it's really important. Like, people don't realize, hey, your hook is really important in what's going on. You might be losing them. Now, rods and, and, and line size, it's all very important too. But, hey, that hook is hooking that fish up and getting him in the boat. So making sure your barb's right, your hook point sharp. And then the style of that hook just flat out catches them. I actually at Kentucky Lake this year, I made a, you know, I ended up making a top 10 and caught a lot of my fish throwing that little nail weight out there, and that Nico rig. You throw that sucker out there and never lost one. So that's a big deal. That's a big deal fishing is your hookup ratio to your landing percentage. And that hook is a meat, is the meat. So if I get me a Nico hook and I get me some Terminator popping frogs, I can go catch me fish right now. I'm telling you right now, all over the country, you pick up those two baits, it's going down. So we're keeping our tour going here. We're over at P-Line, and I found Brandon Cobb. Brandon Cobb, you're holding a new fluorocarbon from P-Line. It is. the new P-Line Tactical, and it's most innovative fluorocarbon out there. I mean, it's pretty much the end of the line when it comes to fluorocarbon. It's new stuff. So, like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of fluorocarbons on the market. With this fluorocarbon, uh, we're starting to see fluorocarbons that are kind of like, you know, set up to work really well with stuff. Uh, certain techniques and things like that. What's tactical do? Well, the difference with tactical, the main difference is everybody knows fluorocarbons can get stiff, especially when you get to the bigger sizes, 16, 17, 20, yeah. they, they get stiff. And this is limper, it casts better, it has a little stretch to it, and that's what makes it limper. And it's a good, it'd be a good, it's good for like finesse applications especially, or treble hooks, things like that, because it has just a slight bit of stretch. So if you were going to spool it up, uh, what are two baits you would throw on tactical? It's a good. It'd be a good finesse line. I mean, anything spinning rod. Okay. Like, spinning rod. Yeah, and it'd be a great line for like a jerk bait. Ah, so, okay. Jerk bait or rattle trap or crank bait, something like that. Okay. 
Uh, as a quick side note, while we got you here, floor carbon aside, um, you know, we just had the 4th of July not too long ago, and I know you're big into fireworks, but did, you didn't shoot any off during then, right? You still have all your hand, or yeah, all your fingers. I, mean, so that's good. I got a Band-Aid home, but that wasn't from fireworks. <laughs> but uh, no, we just did the New Year's show. 4th of July, I just hung out. Okay, you let the professionals do it then, and then when no one's shooting fireworks is when you're like, I got this. That's right, yeah, I, go, I went and watched the professionals, but I was a little critical of them. I think I could have done better. <laughs> well, at least you're here, you got all your digits, and uh, you got a new fluorocarbon. Thanks for talking with us, dude. And I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> Go check everything out. So, stumbled upon the Lunker Hunt booth. Got Quaker State Pro Matt Airy. And uh, Matt, you got some goofy looking thing over here. Man, you call it goofy. I call it fish catching machine. <laughs> but uh, no, it's the new Lunker Hunt link. You know, it's uh, something we're really excited about this year because I think it's going to take top water fishing by storm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of walking baits on the market. So we looked at doing something a little bit different, setting ourselves apart. The cadence on this bait, um, you've got a lot of options. It doesn't just walk back and forth. If you wind it real fast, it'll snake. If you slow it down, it'll walk. It'll do a 180 almost. And the way it displaces water, because the technology that we've used, it's actually got it's got an internal stringer system in each bait that, and they're hinged in the center. So it's almost like two baits in one. Um, this is actually our four and a half inch version that weighs a quarter ounce. Okay. And then our, our larger version, which is a six and three quarter ounce version, and it actually weighs five eighths ounce. Now, I looked at this bait at first and I said, well, it's a hinge bait. I'm not sure about the castability. Well, I can tell you, I've taken this thing out of the lake and you can cast it a mile. I mean, it's unbelievable. It doesn't roll in the air and things like that, that, you know, sometimes a hinge bait would appear. You might be a little concerned about that, but it actually casts a mile. And the action, like I said, is unmatched. It's something a lot different than everything else on the market. We use a paint print process to get this uh, lifelike detail on the body and if you look this is our thread fin shattern pattern now how well you can see that but uh, the detail in it is just amazing um, a couple other colors steal this one from them this is one of my favorites this is the albino um, which you know bones always been a really popular color in top water fishing over the years and the albino is uh, like I said one of my personal favorites but you can see the detail in that when are these going to be available to get my hands on one? You're probably looking at somewhere towards the end of October. Um, and unfortunately, I only actually have one myself. So <laughs> they are really hard to come by right now. Um, yeah, and, and we, we, we really pushed the envelope just to have them here at ICAST and have enough of them for the display and things like that. But it's a man, it's a, it's a really neat bait, man. I'm excited about taking a little one this fall. You know, when the fish get kind of finicky and they get to feeding on real small bait fish. Yeah. And I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put it on a spinning rod and put like eight pounds, six, eight pound mono on there, right. throw it out there, burn it through them. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's going to be the deal. So you just cast the thing out and reel it in? You can do, you can do a lot of different things with it. You know, like I said, if you throw a, a regular walking bait that's not hinged in the center like yep. this bait, you throw it out there and you wind it in, it doesn't have any action whatsoever. It just comes at you like a missile. And this bait right here, because it's hinged in the center, it will actually snake and do some different things. It'll dart around. It looks like a fleeing shad. So, I mean, it, it, it triggers a lot of fish that I think are going to be, uh, that won't commit to a normal topwater bait that will actually eat this bait. Oh, okay. I like it. The two sizes, bunch of colors, or a uh, handful nine, of colors? Nine different colors. And, uh, that, that's the albino and the, the thread fin, which are two of the most lifelike patterns and probably apply to us bass fishermen as much as anything. We got some really cool ones. Ooh. This is, uh, I'm, I'm actually having them rename this bait. They called it the, uh, I think they called it like water snake, but I got to looking at it and uh, I said, man, you know a big cool name for that? It's Copperhead. I said, let's call it Copperhead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, it looks just like the Copperheads we have around the house in the Carolinas. So um, <laughs> that's going to be Copperhead. That's kind of a, but you see the detail on oh, yeah, it. Man. You see the scale pattern and things like that. And uh, we've got some different snake patterns, which is really cool. Ooh. This is uh, this is what we're calling the black mama. Everybody wants a dark color in their top water. Yep. You got to have one of every color if you're a top water oh, fisherman. So we've got nine different colors, and like I said, I'm going to have one of every color and every size in my box. <laughs> but that's black mama there. That's a pretty neat deal too. So. Yeah, that's a cool. And they let you name one? I mean, you're big time when you can get to name one. Well, they hadn't changed it yet, so <laughs> we won't count our chickens before they hatch. But, um, yeah, we'll see about that. But they like the name. When I said Copperhead, they said, well, that's kind of catchy. Nobody has that out there, so um, hopefully we'll see. Dude, you could start a business naming baits. I mean, like uh, with that kind of detail and thought process that goes into something like that? I'm 35 years old, and that's the first cool name I've ever come up with, so I don't think I can make a living doing that. I'll, I'll stick to catching fish. So. That, wor that works, man. Well, I'll let you get back to it. we got to keep wandering around. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us for a little bit. Yeah, Kyle, thanks for stopping by, man. So we moseyed on over here to the Bill Lewis booth. I got Mark Daniels Jr., and this thing 
this is the deal that I've seen all those blurred pictures about. You guys wouldn't let me see before I cast. Right. This is it. We've been trying to hold it back on you guys, man. And um, we've been testing it for a long time. I've had them for quite some time. It's the new Stutter Step by Bill Lewis Outdoors, man. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, a lot of R&D went into it. It's going to be a winner, man. So, first of all, I'm sure you could probably see the video going in the background. But, uh, I mean, it's just, it's like a funky looking topwater. And it's not like anything that... You know, it's not a popper. It's not a walking bait. It's like its own thing. Yeah, it's kind of in its own league, man. I mean, when you first, at first glance, it obviously has a very odd shape to it. Um, and then it has this hard tail. You don't really see that in, in your top water style baits. But the action that comes off of this is what really separates it from anything else out on the market. And, and I think that's what's going to be the game changer. And also, once you fish it, the, the, the selling pitch that, you're, you're going to know it as soon as you tie it on, like, this is the one. Okay. Yeah. It looks to me, it's like a very, uh, I think, Cal Delta. Like, with you holding this thing, I'm thinking, like, 10-pounders on the Delta with this. And I'm thinking the same thing, and I can't wait to get home to throw this thing on the California Delta. You know, the beauty of this bait is all of the different actions that you have in one lure. And as you mentioned, the California Delta, we like to fish in the – troughs of the grass lines in a pocket of our toolies, um, even under a dock or something like that. And with your traditional walking style baits, you know, they're they wanting to come to you. You can't keep them in place. You can't hold on to that strike zone. You know, that bedding bass, she's in a, in, in a, in a hole of the grass. It's hard to keep a bait there. But with this stutter step, man, it really allows you to irritate that fish and draw them out of that cover. Well, dude, like looking at some of the strikes on this video here, I mean, they're mad at it when they come up after this thing. And you can, like you said, you can pop it. It's just a, it's a cool looking thing, man. Like I, I might pocket one and just walk away with it. Uh, but there's a lot of guys here looking at yet. Got to pat me down. I mean, I'll, maybe Friday I'll come back at the end of the show. We'll give you one, Kyle. We'll, we'll give Kyle one. We like Kyle around here, man. But yeah, no, it's, um, it's in a class of its own. You know, I've, I've had it for some time. I put a lot of effort in, into research and development and debate, man, and I'm really excited to get out and start fishing it and, and, and applying it in tournament situations. And I think everyone else is really excited about it as well. I think it's going to do really, really well across the nation, all species of bass. Uh, I'm going to throw two hard questions at you. First one, uh, when can the public get their hands on this bad boy? Uh, they're going to be released in September at pretty much all of your retailers that carry rattle traps, which I'm assuming is every single retailer in the nation. Yep, I don't think you can go to a store and not buy a trap. So they ought to have the new stutter step available. And, Perfect uh, time for the fall topwater bite. It's going to be great, man. Shad are going to start pushing in the back of pox hits and blase blee, and you're going to have your stutter step to catch them. What about uh, cost? Cost. These are going to retail for $13.99, which in my opinion is a really – it's a you know it's it's a it's a price point that's not too high. Um, you know there's a lot of lures we buy at our top water base that are way more than that, and it's a very sturdy lure. The paint job's great on it. It's gonna hold up, and um, and I think you're really gonna be impressed with the bait. I dig it, man. Well, I'll let you get back to you know talking to all the other media here, but uh, you know thanks for hanging out with us. Anytime, Kyle. You know I love FLW. I love you guys, man. All the editors, man. You're one of my favorite. I love Jody too, and and Kurt and all the Don't guys. Give him any love. But man, hey, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. I'm glad I could, you guys let me show you this new bait, and it's going to be a game changer, man. So you guys be on the lookout for the new Stutter Step by Rattletrap. Get you some. Yeah, please. <laughs>